Before we dive into multiplication, let's make sure you're comfortable with addition. Try evaluating this sum, 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3. And to review, click down here instead. Right, so this sum is 15. In other words, when you add up a total of 5 threes, you get 15. This is actually an example of multiplication. A shorter way to write this sum is like this. This is the multiplication symbol over here, and you can read this aloud as 3 times 5, or 3 multiplied by 5. And it means you're adding together 5 threes. So 3 times 5 equals 15. Sometimes, instead of this symbol, you'll see a dot, which means the same thing, 3 times 5. So try another example. What's 4 times 7? And by the way, product is a word for what you get when you multiply numbers together. Nicely done. So 4 times 7 equals 28. You can think of 4 times 7 as adding up 7 4s together. So if we draw 7 columns of dots with 4 dots each, then the total number of dots here is 4 times 7. Next, let's see what happens if we were to switch the order of these two numbers. So instead of 4 times 7, try evaluating 7 times 4. Exactly. Just like 4 times 7, 7 times 4 also equals 28. 7 times 4 is adding 4 7's, so here are 7 times 4 dots. And when you look at these dots, you can see why 4 times 7 equals 7 times 4. We have just as many purple dots as yellow dots. So in general, the order in which you multiply numbers does not matter. You could have 4 groups of 7, or 7 groups of 4. Either way, this product equals 28. Next, try evaluating these products. Nicely done. So here are these products. Now what about multiplying numbers that are not integers? For example, what's 2.5 times 4? Well, we can make four groups of 2.5 dots and notice the half dots down here. We can combine these half dots to make some whole dots. And so 2.5 times 4 is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Next, Try multiplying 3 and 1.2, and feel free to ask for a hint if you get stuck. Excellent! So 3 times 1.2 equals 3.6. For trickier multiplication problems, it's usually more convenient to use a calculator like the one down here. Try using it to evaluate 2.35 times 8.4. Excellent, so this product is 19.74. Next, try evaluating the product of three numbers, 3 times 4 times 5. You can do this by multiplying 3 and 4, and then multiplying that result by 5, or you can instead multiply 4 and 5, and then multiply that result by 3. Either way, you should get the same answer. Precisely, so this product equals 60. And as we said earlier, the order in which you multiply the numbers makes no difference. So let's switch up the order a little. And let's do it one more time. So as a final challenge, evaluate these two products. Right, these products also equal 60. You've done some great work here. To get started, let's make sure you're comfortable with multiplication. Try evaluating this product, 7 times 2. And to review, click down here instead. Exactly, 7 times 2 equals 14. You can think of this as having two groups of 7 dots, which is a total of 14 dots. Next, try evaluating these two products, 8 times 1, which would be one group of 8 dots, and 1 times 5 which is five groups with one dot each. Excellent! So eight times one is one group of eight dots, which is a total of eight. 
and 1 times 5 is 5 groups with one dot in each group, which is a total of 5. As you can see from these examples, if you multiply any number by 1, you'll get the same number. So next, try evaluating 1 times 1. Right, one group of 1 means you have a grand total of 1. So 1 times 1 equals 1. Next, take a look at these products, 3 times 0 and 0 times 6. Remember, if you have 0 of something, you have nothing. So 3 times 0 means you have 0 groups of 3, and 0 times 6 means you have 6 groups of 0. So what are these products? Nicely done. So these products both equal 0. In general, if you multiply any number by 0, you'll always get 0. So then what's 0 times 0? If you have 0 groups with 0 dots each, how many dots do you have in total? Right, even 0 times 0 gives you 0. So to summarize, multiplying any number by 1 gives you that same number back, and multiplying any number by 0 always gives you 0. Before we get started on division, let's make sure you're comfortable with multiplication. Try evaluating this product, 6 times 4, and to review, click down here instead. Right, 6 times 4 equals 24, and here's another way to write this. You can read this aloud as 24 divided by 6 equals 4. So what this equation is saying is that if you take 24, like these 24 dots here, and divide it into 6 equal groups, then there are 4 dots in each group. So 4 times 6 equals 24, and 24 divided by 6 equals 4. Next, try evaluating this quotient. What's 35 divided by 7? And by the way, quotient is a word for what you get when you divide a number by another. So one way to think about this question is, what number times 7 will give you 35? And another way is to take 35 and divide it into 7 equal groups. Then how many are in each group? Both ways of thinking about this question will give you the right answer. Excellent work! So 35 divided by 7 equals 5. If you divide 35 into 7 equal groups, there are 5 in each group and 5 times 7 equals 35. Next, try evaluating a few more quotients. 22 divided by 2, 18 divided by 6, 49 divided by 7, and 8 divided by 4. You might notice there are a few different symbols here that mean divide. This horizontal line with numbers above and below it, this division symbol over here, and this slash. So again, this is 49 divided by 7, and this is 8 divided by 4. Nicely done, so here are those answers. Next, try evaluating this quotient, 5 divided by 2. So in other words, you have 5 dots, and you're dividing them into 2 equal groups. How many dots are in each group? Be as precise as you can. Right, so 5 divided by 2 equals 2.5, or 2.5. And, and 2 times 2.5 equals 5. So when you divide one integer, or whole number, by another, don't be surprised if you get decimal places in your answer. For trickier division problems, it's usually more convenient to use a calculator, like the one down here. Try using it to evaluate 12 divided by 0.7, and round your answer to two decimal places. Brilliant! So 12 divided by 0.7 equals about 17.14. The exact answer actually goes on forever. Finally, try evaluating this expression. 15 divided by 5 divided by 0.75. With division, it's important to perform the operations in order. So first evaluate 15 divided by 5, and then divide that result by 0.75. We'll be switching up the order of operations in a later lesson. We'll see what happens when you divide numbers by 0. But first, try evaluating this product, 6 times 0. In other words, if you have 0 groups of 6, 
how much do you have in total? And to review multiplying numbers by zero, click down here instead. Right, six times zero equals zero. In general, when you multiply any number by zero, you always get zero. Next, let's make sure you're up to speed on division. Try evaluating this quotient, 12 divided by 3. Excellent, so 12 divided by 3 equals 4. 12 divided by 3 is the same as asking what number you need to multiply 3 by to get 12. And that number is 4, because 4 times 3 equals 12. Next, try evaluating this quotient, 0 divided by 7. In other words, what number do you have to multiply 7 by in order to get 0? Right, 0 divided by 7 equals 0, because to get 0, you need to multiply 7 by 0. Now, instead of dividing 0 by a number, what happens if we take a number, like 5, and divide it by 0? In other words, which of these numbers can you multiply by zero to get five? And if you think they're all wrong, click down here instead. Exactly right. Not one of these is correct. Zero times zero equals zero, as does zero times one, zero times five, zero times ten, and zero times twenty-five. Zero times any number always gives you zero. So then what number times zero gives you five? In other words, what is five divided by zero? The answer is, there is no answer. Five divided by zero is said to be undefined. And that goes for any number divided by zero. Expressions like these, where you divide by zero, are undefined. That's the mathematical way of saying they're meaningless and not actually numbers. There's just no answer. Even zero divided by zero is undefined. Let's see why. To evaluate zero divided by zero, you're looking for a number that when you multiply it by zero, gives you zero. Take a look at these numbers here. Which of these, when you multiply by zero, gives you zero? That's right. Take any of these numbers, multiply by zero, and you get zero again. So which of these numbers is the one correct answer for zero divided by zero? None of them. You can't take a number, divide it by another number, and get a million different answers. That's not useful in any way. So zero divided by zero is undefined. And again, that goes for any number divided by zero. So as a final exercise, suppose someone asks you to evaluate 26 divided by zero. What's the proper mathematical response you'd give them? 